Hey everyone, welcome back to my workshop. We're over here in the corner by the CNC machines. And I know you haven't seen that a lot, but we're gonna be changing that this year. And uh, what I wanna do is uh, kind of show off what I got to do earlier this year. Um, I traveled down to Las Vegas to attend CES with my friend David from the Clack Shack. When I left CES, took a little detour, went down to Phoenix, uh, both to see my dad, as well as swing by and hang out with Cody from Cadence Manufacturing. Been using his bits for a number of years now and uh, have been gotten to know him uh, online and through text and everything, but this is the first time we got to hang out in person. So met him up at his shop and uh, did a little bit of a tour through how he uh, makes the Jenny bits on a CNC grinder. Now, unfortunately, um, I had some uh, technical difficulties with my equipment. I forgot to change the microphone settings. And so the audio really didn't come through. So I'm gonna be doing my best to narrate what was going on and explain as best the process as I can remember. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully give you a nice peek behind the curtain. So if you wanna find out more, see a little bit about the Jenny bits and how they're made, stay tuned. I'm gonna jump right into it. We made our way from the airport to Cody's shop where we found uh, he's got a nice tight but organized layout to really help keep his workflow going smooth. Cody started out with an overview of the Anka CNC grinder, giving some safety precautions and a basic primer of the controls, uh, where we went ahead and loaded up the correct job on the touchscreen controller. In this case, it was gonna be a quarter inch downtown Jenny. So then he showed me the blanks that he orders. These are carbide blanks. Then he gets them the right diameter and length and uh, also notes that there's a chamfer end that needs to go into the collet. After that, we went ahead and used a dial indicator. Uh, this makes sure that the blank is running true in the collet and if not, uh, what we do is we take a blast of uh, compressed air, usually clean it out or uh, possibly replace the collet. Then we need to make sure the bit is set into the correct depth into the collet. If it's too short, the wheel pack may grind into the collet. With the depth set right and everything running true, we can go ahead and shut the door and uh, let the machine run its own checks. It's got a probe that it's going to check and make sure everything's running true. And if the tolerance is out of spec, it will reject it. And it'll tell us right away if, it, if the run out's bad. Oh, we're good to go. All right, so now we get to watch it grind. With the initial grinds on the blank complete, it goes ahead and uses lasers to measure the geometry to know exactly where everything's at, check the final dimension of the tool. And uh, in this case, Cody will show us how we might correct for any variations. What that does is that remembers the map file of where the tool's at, uh, all the indexing and everything. So we can rerun that same tool as long as we don't take it out of the collet. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll shut off all the operations except for the overall dimension and the laser. So now that I shut off those processes, it'll reach all the model and it'll show you exactly what it's gonna be grinding. And it's, it's represented by the color here also. So now what we'll wanna do is we'll, so here's our wheel pack. Our cup wheel is what does the OD. So we'll come in here and we'll make an adjustment. We need to make that a bigger, smaller number. So we need to move in. So right now it's minus six tenths. Let's just go minus a full foul. And then we'll rerun it. And we'll check your tool. With the regrind complete, we can go ahead and pull the blank out of the collet finally and do our final inspections. We'll be checking the uh, final di diameter as well as uh, just inspecting the edge for a clean shear. So 
five five. So that's that again. That's good because as that wheel starts breaking down, that core is going to grow. So I just inspect all this, make sure it looks good. I look at the end work. So as you can see, Cody uses multiple methods to ensure that the tooling is coming out to the right dimension, everything is lining up correctly. Happy with the tool job, uh, he sets me about loading up the carriage with about 50 blanks uh, to send a uh, nice batch job started on the machine. With the carriage all loaded up, we can slide the back into the machine and have the robot pick up one of the blanks and insert into the collet. We want to then pause the job and do a quick check, make sure that it is getting inserted into the correct depth. And then the machine itself will run its probes to check the run out before continuing on with the grind. So a neat thing too is so, so let's say the run out's bad on this tool, it'll reject it and put it away and grab a new one. With both Cody and the machine happy with the placement of the first blank, it goes about starting on the grind for the blank and will continue to work its way through all 50 that are set up in the carriage. Like I said earlier, if it finds one that it doesn't like, it'll return it to the carriage and just move on to the next blank. This type of automation really helps Cody be efficient with his time. Uh, in fact, he can set up jobs for a larger pack of tools and let it run overnight to uh, really help maximize his time and uh, in the shop. This run of 50 blanks will take roughly two, two and a half hours to complete and then they would be uh, all set up in the carriage for Cody to collect. After that process is complete and he's happy with his checks, he does need to send these off for a coating. He works with another local business to be able to handle that for him. And he mentioned that overall from kind of ordering in the blanks to him doing the tooling, getting back from coating, it can take up to a couple weeks to uh, complete a full set of tooling. So he tries to work with his partners to ensure that everything uh, is done in a timely manner and can keep things stocked. I was having a lot of fun hanging out with Cody, but we did need to get back on the road. Uh, but Cody graciously gave me the first two bits that we made on the machine that day. But uh, I also wanted to give him something. So I had brought down this uh, catch-all tray that I made and engraved with his logo on it. And uh, just a gift from one maker or another as a thank you for spending some time in the shop with us today. I'm back home now. And unfortunately, during that trip and I didn't know it at the time, but I was actually coming down with the flu or something and uh, fortunately got myself sick, got Cody sick and my father, but wanted to thank Cody for that time. And uh, he did send me home with the two bits, the first ones we made. And so I'm definitely going to be using that on both these machines. We'll be doing some projects in the near future. Um, but uh, if you want to check out more about his shop and uh, the bits he has for a sale, I will have a link down below. Definitely check them out. Uh, and if you're new to it and want to try it out, he has a couple of beginner packs. He's got an inlay pack that has all the set bits you can do uh, that you'd need to do some basic inlay stuff and also kind of a CNC beginner bit uh, pack that has like a down cut bit that has a bowl cut bit and I believe a uh, V bit for doing some engraving. So a couple of nice starter sets if you just want to try it out. Otherwise, uh, you know, the good old standby, the quarter inch down shear uh, is a real workhorse in my shop. So um, you want to try that one out as well. Um, go for it. Uh, it's not affiliate links or anything, just helping Cody out. Uh, appreciate him uh, as a supporter of makers and, uh, and uh, as a good friend that uh, I've gotten to know over the years and now had some fun in his shop. So. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or uh, thoughts on some CNC content you like to see, definitely leave a comment down below. If you like this video, hey, hit that like button. Uh, also, go and follow Cody on all his socials and, and uh, make sure you're following to see what he does in his shop. And uh, if you're new here, um, like what you saw, um, want to see more, hey, consider hitting that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate it. So um, that is all for today. Um, we'll have, like I said, we'll have more coming on these machines in the future. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it, but, uh, I hope you can get out in your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.